What I learned is laser focus. Stuff takes time. I'm comfortable with us working through this year over year. I don't, I don't need instant overnight success. There's a lot of dynamics here. If you look at the entire uh, crypto ecosystem, you, you have, um, you have a, a, a set of regulatory uncertainty, especially regulatory uncertainty around stable coins and crypto tokens uh, and whether or not they're securities. And that creates a little bit of, of un, uh, anxiety. You have a lot of leverage offshore. Right? You have a lot of crypto exchanges that can trade with up to 20x leverage. And those crypto exchanges have many, many tokens that are cross-collateralized. And between them and the DeFi exchanges, you can get much higher than 20x leverage. So that's the second source of volatility. The crypto markets are almost designed to encourage volatility. And that creates kind of a love-hate relationship between the, the crypto ecosystem and the Bitcoin hodlers. The Bitcoin hodlers are holding for, you know, a decade, you know, and, and sometimes for a hundred years and sometimes for a thousand years. And yet you've got fast money hedge funds that have a tax incentive, a huge amount of leverage and massive volatility. But you have two totally different investment mentalities here. And uh, when they come together, the result is you've got, in my opinion, the world's least risky asset to hold over the next century called Bitcoin. And you've got the world's most volatile fast money market, you know, called crypto. And they're both conjoined, joined at the hip for better or for worse in the year 2022. This is a great entry point for institutional investors. I talk to, I talk to high net worth individuals, family offices, public company executives, private company owners, and they watch Bitcoin run up in 2021. And there are a lot of people that would be afraid to own it if it was going up 400% a year. But if they're staring at it and it's 40% off the all time high and it's consolidating, and they see that it's being embraced by people like Bill Miller, by very well-respected investors. It's being embraced by the regulators. It's being embraced by senators and congressmen and public investors and public companies. They're looking at this as like a good entry point. I'd be remiss not to make a more important point, which is what's really going on here at a macro level is Inflation, the CPI headline inflation is 7%. Look at the Turkish lira, it's collapsing. The peso is collapsing. So there's a volatility story for a conventional investor in Manhattan that's got a portfolio of equities. But 75% of the world can't buy the S&P index. They're in Africa, Asia, South America. And if they've got their assets in banks, they're going to have them seized. They can't buy the equity. So the real story here is digital property that solves a problem that 8 billion people face. Look, if you're going to invest in Bitcoin, a short time horizon is four years. A mid time horizon is 10 years. The right time horizon is forever. You know, Warren Buffett said, you know, if you wouldn't hold it for 10 years, you shouldn't hold it for 10 minutes. So if you look at the course of four years, no one's ever lost money over four years holding Bitcoin. And, and if you look at you know, uh, our experience, we started buying it at $10,000 and now it's up by a factor of four. So, so given the right time horizon, you're fine. So it's a blessing and a curse. The blessing is it makes it the most exciting, interesting thing in the financial universe everywhere in the world. And, and the curse is, it can induce anxiety for people that have a short attention span or, or are focused on a narrow time horizon.